What up, Logan here, Taekwon Crypto, and today I'm talking about one of the most misunderstood and I think least talked about aspects of a crypto project, liquidity. Ask anybody you know what liquidity is and see what they say. Now, okay, sure, a few of you brainiacs know the answer, but even if they know what it is, most people will stumble to give you a clear definition. And so today, we're gonna to try to solve that. And I'm gonna do it first by giving you an example. All right, what I've got here is super simple, right? Here's a, a glass and it's filled with some water. Now, the glass represents a liquidity pool and inside of it is the actual liquidity. Now, if I take this little um, yellow dude, which represents a trade, and I, and I put it in the pool, you can see it has very little effect on the, the rising of the water, which we're gonna say is the price of a token. Now, if I step up my game a little bit and I add a bigger dude, put him in, there's a little bit bigger of a splash, but still no real movement on the price. Now, if I add this tennis ball, now bigger splash, and now look at the price movement. Watch, watch the water line as the trade goes in to the liquidity pool. The water line moves up substantially more because it's a bigger trade. Now, what if I wanna come along and make a really big trade? It doesn't fit. Now, the analogy isn't perfect because a liquidity pool typically has two tokens in it. The one you want to use to buy and the token that you want to purchase. And so instead of water, there would be, imagine just a bunch of these tokens in there. And let's say um, I wanted to buy that red. Well, I would put my yellow USDC or die into the pool. And then I would get out of it my wet red from Angry Birds. And in that example, the pool is about the right size for these particular tokens, where when I add them, it doesn't do much to disrupt the economy or the water or the contents of the pool. So now pretend this tennis ball is a bigger one of those yellow tokens or the USDC or die. This bigger trade, I want to put more of this in because I want more of those red tokens out. Now, when I add it, it disrupts the pool which means it has a greater impact on the price. And keep in mind, this is a trade on a decentralized exchange like Uniswap, where, where the exchange is only possible because of liquidity providers who put their tokens inside the liquidity pool so that you can trade it. The point is, liquidity in the context of a decentralized exchange is this. It's how easy you can convert tokens to and from each other without disrupting the price or really that's a symptom of a healthy token where there is enough liquidity that you can make trades in and out without dramatically impacting the price in fact one of my favorite definitions is from kraken.com in which they talk about liquidity right here liquidity refers to how easily an asset can be bought or sold at a stable price on a given market. The quicker you can sell off an asset as close to your asking price as possible, the more liquid an exchange is considered to be. So when you think about a decentralized exchange, the ability to make that trade at all, first and foremost depends on if there is a liquidity pool available for you to trade in. After that, it depends on how big the pool is. The price is going to be set based on how much you want to buy and how much available liquidity there is. And we can see this pretty easily by going into Uniswap and looking at the token pairs. And if we take one that has a high liquidity pool, like for example, USDC to ETH, which has a $530 million liquidity pool. And then if I wanted to do a trade on that, let's say I wanted to convert 100 Ethereum to USDC. For the record, this isn't an actual trade. I don't have 100 Ethereum or really anything close to that. So you can see here that the price per USDC is $361. What if I wanted to do a thousand of them? 
you can see the price is still about $361 each. What if I want to do 10,000 of them? Well, now it has a bit of an impact, right? The price has gone down. The amount per USDC I'm paying per ETH is less, making ETH less valuable to sell. How about 100,000? You can see now I can only get $318 per ETH. So in this example, with a really big pool, I'm able to make fairly sizable trades, 100 and 1,000, without dramatically impacting the price. Now, if we flip that and look for a relatively small liquidity pool, in this case, let's look at the ETH and DMG pool. Now, since the swap here is from ETH to DMG, we don't have a US dollar reference, but let's watch what happens. If I were to trade one ETH right now today, I could receive 1,336 DMG. What if I were to try and trade 10 ETH? Well, now I'm down to 1,327. What about 100? 1,245. So in this case, I'm getting less DMG per ETH at a faster rate because the liquidity pool is smaller. That is, we're seeing a more noticeable impact on the waterline the bigger the ball we put in. Anyway, I don't know if that analogy helps. Where it impacts you is if you want to be involved in a token and you want to make bigger trades and you want to maximize the value of that trade, then you need to trade a token that has relatively high liquidity to the size of trades you're going to make. Now the flip side is low liquidity pools and low liquidity tokens because of that price fluctuation. There's actually some arbitrage opportunities that will We'll do another video on arbitrage. Basically, there are opportunities where the swings are going to happen, and you as an investor, if you're watching and paying attention, might be able to make some really good buy opportunities. An example would be if somebody sells a bunch of tokens on an illiquid asset, then the price is going to drop substantially. And if you're watching for that, it might be a good opportunity for you to buy them. Conversely, if someone comes in and purchases a bunch of tokens on a low liquidity pool, then it might be a good opportunity for you to sell them. But the point is, next time someone asks you what is liquidity, tell them it's how easily an asset can be bought or sold at a stable price in a given market. If you memorize that, you will sound like the smartest guy in the room, even if like me, you're not. Anyway, that's it. Quick video on liquidity. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, share the video.